Okay, it's a great hot Thursday. Man, it's hot outside. But um, now remind me, is today the day for homework assignment due? Yes. It is. And you had to do the quilt, the pattern with the quilts, or the checkerboard. You had to do the checkerboard one? I've been hearing people talk about their attempts. And it sounds like everyone's pretty good. Any questions? And then what, what were the other ones? Were there, there were some other functions that you had to do? Chapter 2 and 3. Yeah, oh, the 3 is to identify whether or not a function is iterative, which what he means is tail recursive. Yeah. Okay, well, if there's no more questions, we'll forge ahead. Now, so I think we're going to do um, we're going to do two or three more little exercises here. The first one that we're going to do is we're going to investigate Fermat numbers. Now, and before we do that, there's uh, something that we want to point out about exponentiation. Okay. Now, let's take a look at what the, what is associative mean? Like two plus three parentheses plus four. We know that this equals. 2 plus parentheses 3 plus 4, right? This is the associate, this is the associative law for what operation? For addition. The problem is, or you know, the, the point is that this doesn't work for exponentiation. It's not true. So let's look at the slide. It's not true that if you take 3 to the fourth, and then you take that to the fifth, that's not the same thing as taking three to the parentheses, four to the fifth. Do you see what I mean? So the parentheses, you know, you can move the parentheses from here to here, you know, because addition is associative, but you can't, you can't do that with exponentiation. Three to the four parentheses to the fifth is not the same thing as three to the parentheses. Actually, what is three to the four? What is the one on the left-hand side? Anybody, can anybody figure that one out? And what is 3 to the 20th? Somebody have a calculator? Is that 3 to the 20th? How do you get that? Or four times? Is that, is that some kind of... Is that, can you do 3 to the 20th? Yeah, but it's very big. It's very big. What about 3 to the... What about, what about 4 to the 5th? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, th 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 the one on the left is 3 to the what? The left is 3 to the 20th. Yeah. yeah. And the one on the right is 3 to the, yeah, I guess I, guess I, I, guess I should not have asked what the actual number was. <laughs> Especially your calculator would probably choke on 3 to the 1,024. <laughs> so these are way different. Not just a little bit different. They are way different. But the reason we point this out is because Fermat numbers are defined this way. The nth Fermat number is 2 raised to the, to the nth plus 1. Okay. That's the definition of, Fermat, of a Fermat number. So let's do the first few. What is F sub 0? Yeah, 2 raised to the 0 is 1. No, sorry. Yeah, 2 raised to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. So the first few Fermat numbers, n equals 0 is 2 plus 1. What's, what is F sub 1? 5? Prediction? What about F, how fast do these things go up? What about F sub 2? Ooh, we have a difference of opinion here. Okay, you want to make a prediction? 
oh, now we still have a di disagreement. Come on, you guys. Can we not do this? Is this higher math? 17. 17? <laughs> okay, then what about <laughs> n equals 3? It's 257. Yes. So for n equals 3, it's 2. Now notice that what you're doing. No, notice that this is, now this is an interesting, uh, uh, going to be an interesting observation that we're going to use when we actually program this up. 2 to the n, what's the difference between you know, as we go up, what are we doing to that first term in the expansion? In other words, for here, with these parentheses here, what is this one compared to this one? It's squared. Does everybody see, see how that works? Because it's 2 raised to the 2 to the n, every time n goes up once, what we're doing is we're taking the previous value and we're squaring it. Is everybody clear on that? So look, here on this next slide. So for n equals 3, that 2 squared, squared, squared is 2 repeatedly squared three times. Does everybody see that? That's 2 repeatedly squared three times. So, so obviously, you know, in, in, functional, in, the, in the functional paradigm with functional programming, we re, it's recursive. So we want to find out how each one is related to the one before. Well, the way this is related to the one before is it's the one before, but it's squared. So it's repeatedly squared. Yeah? So here's the thing. What we're going to do first is we're going to write a, well, we're going to assume that we have a function named repeatedly square. And repeatedly square 2, 0 should return 2. Are you with me? And then repeatedly square 2, 1 should return 2 squared, which is 4. And then Repeatedly square 2, 2 should return 2 squared, squared, which is 16. Are you with me? So now look, you guys. If we have a function named repeatedly square that does this, how could we write, how could we write the Fermat number? Is all we would have to do, here, let's go, let's go back. Is all we would have to do would be to, to do what? To get the Fermat number. We'd just have to do what? Add one to that. Yeah? Is everybody good? What are these numbers used for? Oh, what are they used for? They're used, to, <laughs> they're used for good problems on exams in math classes. <laughs> Actually, that's a good question. No, do Fermat numbers have a use? I mean, they are of intense um, theoretical interest in pure mathematics. But... I don't know if I've ever heard of a use for Fermat numbers. Google that. See, see, you, well, I, don't, I can't think of one. Isn't their whole purpose wrong anyway? Like huh? They were created because you were saying they would all be prime, but they're not. So yeah, that's another interesting prime. thing I was going to mention later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, what, in fact, what do you know? Let's go back here. What do you notice about, what do you notice about 3, 5, 17, and 257? They are all prime. They are all prime numbers. Yeah, 3 is prime, 5 is prime, 17. If you try to factor 257, you can't do it. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting observation. We'll say more about that in a minute. Okay. But, um, but anyway, um, so if we had this repeatedly square, is all we'd have to do would be to add 1 to it, and that would give us our Fermat number. Okay, so... Now, this next, next we want to be, before we write um, the Fermat number function, let's take a look at, um, wait a second. Let's actually 
well, well, no, okay, we'll do that later. Okay, so let's, um, let's take a look at this uh, before we go on, before we actually write the function, let's make an observation because, because uh, we did the example with two, but this is true for a general base B. What is B raised to the two to the N? Now, I want to convince you of something. Do you agree that two to the N equals two times two to the N minus one? Yes. So therefore, what is B raised to the two to the N? B raised to the N minus one. So is everybody with me on this? Step. So, so that's b to the two times two to the ms one. But now, what is b to the two? What is b? What is what is something to the something times something? Well, I mean, what is x to the y times z? X to the y to the z. Is everybody with me on this? How do you know this? How can you prove this in your own mind? Because anytime you have a, the exponent, if it's an integer, a, a non-negative integer in the exponent, it's what? It's x times x times x that many times, right? So if you have, like if y is 3 and z is 5, this is x to the 3 times 5 is x to the 15, right? But that's x to the 3 5 times. Because 3 times 5 is 15. Are you with me? So if that's the case, what is b to the 2 times 2 to the n minus 1? Yeah. Yes, b squared times 2 to the n minus 1. Right? Mm -hmm. And this, is, this first one is what we use in the definition of the Fermat numbers. This is what we use for the, rec for, for the, recursive, the recursive one. Because look, Look, what is this saying? What is this top one here? What is this top expression? B raised to the 2 to the n. What is this? This is B. This is B repeatedly squared n times. Are you with me? But what is this? Yeah, yeah, b squared, repeatedly squared, n minus 1 times. So this is going to be the basis for our repeatedly squared function. Is everybody with me on this? Look, do you see that, what, do you see that this top expression is b repeatedly squared n times, whereas this is what? b squared repeatedly squared n minus 1 times. So that's how, that's the recur, th this is the, recur the recursive relation. This is the recursive call. Are you with me? So what you have to do, the way, the way we're going to do our repeatedly squared is, what we're going to do is, the recursive call will be, if, if, we, if we have a value of n, what we'll do is, we will call it recursively with a value of n minus 1, but then it will be b squared that we're doing it n minus 1 times. Do you see how this is going to be our recursive call? This, this right here is going to be our recursive call to compute this one up here. Are you with me? Okay, so let's write Fermat number and repeatedly square. So, here we go. Okay, so here we are in Dr. Rackett, and I'll tell you what, let's do first things first. Let's define, so now can you tell me, let's define Fermat number. Okay, so how do we do that? This is up in our definition panel. Define. Mm -hmm. So let's call it F-E-R-M-A-T dash N-U-M-B-E-R. And then what always goes here? Lambda. And now how many parameters does Fermat number have? One. 
one, one, one parameter, so we'll call it n. Okay, and now, assuming that we have repeatedly square, Yeah, we have to add one to repeatedly squared. Actually, actually, yeah, we should maybe here. Let's take a take a break on the board. Repeat. Let's not worry about that yet. It will be, but let's not worry about that yet. Look, does everybody see that what we want is repeatedly? Oh, didn't we? Did we have a slide for this? Yeah, here we go. Repeatedly, yeah, here's the slide. Um, repeatedly square 2, 2 should return 2 squared, should return 16. So how many parameters does repeatedly square have? It has two parameters. So, and so what do we have to give, what should we give repeatedly square? Yes. Okay, so, so what do we call here? Uh, we can't do, we cannot do, we plus. cannot start it here. Plus. Why do we have to do plus? Yeah, because we have, we have to add one to it, right. Okay, so one plus, okay, so plus, and now what? One. Uh, we could do it either way. Let's do the repeated square. Repeated square. R-E. Repeatedly square, and now we repeatedly square what? Two, and then how many times? N, and we close this off, and now what do we have to add to that? One. One. Boom, boom, boom. Now, is everybody clear on how this works? No, we haven't, now, we, now the hard part is writing repeatedly square. Okay. Now what did we say? Okay, so let's define. Rep repeatedly square, and what always goes here, lambda, and how many, we just looked at it, how many parameters does repeatedly square have? Two. It has two, so let's call them, uh, let's call it B and N, B and N. Now always when you have a recursive one, What's always comes first? Yeah. yeah, we have to check for the base case. And what is our repeatedly square, what was our base case for repeatedly square? If it equals zero. If, it equals zero. Uh, if what equals zero? N. So if, so how do I write that? Equals Parentheses N. equals N zero. And now you guys, what gets returned in this case? It, is it two? Because they're going to add one in Fermat numbers. Yes. Like right here. Two zero should return two. Yeah? So. Ah, wait. That's two. But now we don't have twos here. What do we have? Bs. So it's B. Yeah? And now what? Yeah, uh, repeatedly square, yeah, now, oh, here, maybe what we should do is the following. Now, do you guys remember this? This one's built in, SQR. Let's do SQR5. We got this little warning light, but that's fine. If it is zero, would it be one? No, because B is repeatedly squared no times, so it's B. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be one because it's repeatedly squared no times, which gives it, which means that it's B, right? So we have this built-in SQR. Okay. So now, so now, how do? So what do we write here? Repeatedly square. Now what we have to have is we have to have t 
two, we have two things here. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? How are we going to have two things here? Well, let's go back to here. Did you have a question? Okay, so, so look. So how are we going to write this? B repeatedly squared n times equals what? Equals what? B squared, B squared repeatedly squared n minus 1 times. So how does that translate to this code? Yeah, or, or we can just, down here we can say what? Square, Square foot, yeah. So we could say SQ, SQR, what? B. B, and then how many times? Yeah, so in scheme, minus N1. Boom, 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 boom. Let's do run, okay? And let's see if our Fermat numbers work. Let's do Fermat number three. Remember what that one was? 257. You want to see how fast these things go up? Let's do Fermat number five. What do you think? Wow. Yeah, it really goes up fast because it, it repeatedly. And what do you suppose? <laughs> you want to do something really big for my number 10? Do you think it can handle that? Whoa! There's the 10th Fermat number. Do you think that's prime? <laughs> well, you know. Actually, there, it's kind of interesting because Pierre de Fermat thought that all Fermat numbers were prime. But guess what? 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all prime. If you, do, um, if you do 1, 2, 3, and 4. But this fifth one here that we wrote, which is 4, 2, 9, 4, 9, 6, 7, 2, 9, 7. Euler discovered that that one's not prime. And he found, he factored it. This was like years and years later. And, and Fermat didn't, you know, he didn't live to see that his conjecture was not correct. In fact, for all the ones even bigger than five, no one, no one has been able to find, a, has, has been able to find an, another prime one that's bigger than, than the fifth one. <laughs> Prove that this one's prime? No. Well, just try to find <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, it gets really, the computation, even on a system as, as fast as this, it, it, because how do, you, how, do you, how do you compute that a number is prime? What do you have to search for? All the possible factors. So you have to go through one by one. Brute force, you'd go through one by one. So anyway, this, is, this has proved to be a very fertile field of of uh, investigation of pure mathematicians. Did you ever find? Did you ever find out if there's a practical purpose? Practical? I didn't see any. Did anybody say that, that nothing's practical with Fermat numbers? I wish that if my life's worth work was a mistake, it would still be just as famous in hundreds of years. <laughs> right. Well, the Fermat numbers are they are famous, and he's still famous, even though even though they aren't all, even even though only the ones up to up until this one are prime, and the other ones are not. Okay, so let's do. <laughs> okay, so let's do. Let's do in, in preparation for our next one, uh, which is uh, perfect. So those are Fermat numbers. The next thing we're going to look at is our perfect numbers. Now, in order to see how perfect numbers work, let's review some uh, a function called remainder. Oh, that was a good question, and we should see. Oh, that's an excellent question. Look at this code. 
Can you tell me if repeatedly square is tail recursive or not? The answer is a definite yes or no. And which one is it? Can you tell whether or not it's tail recursive? Repeatedly yeah. square. Repeatedly square. That's tail recursive. Absolutely it is. But Fermat number isn't, but Fermat number isn't even recursive. Oh. Period. It only calls it once. So that's like the helper. Are you with me? It's like the repeatedly square is the tail recursive helper function. And it is tail, yeah. It is tail recursive. That was a good observation. I'm glad you asked. Is it still tail recursive if you have the plus one in the repeatedly square? Repeatedly, okay. The, the Fermat number function is not recursive, period. Or is repeatedly square recursive if we have if b, instead it's b plus one? That, that's still oh, that's still tail recursive. Yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's if you have to do stuff to the recursive call. Like if you had some more computation for the base case, it's still tail recursive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm glad you asked that. I was going to point that out. And I forgot. Well, repeatedly square is the helper function. Oh, that wouldn't work because repeatedly squared is not b plus 1 in the base case. That would be an error. You could put it there. It, I have, I put b plus 1 in the base case. In oh, and it worked? Yeah. Oh, then repeatedly, yeah, but repeat, oh. There, yeah, oh, I see. It would not be as clean. Yeah. No, I, yeah, this is the clean way to do it. I didn't even think about that. About, so are you saying that you can write one Fermat number function that calls itself tail recursively? If you just gave it two and n, two and n. Oh, but then you wouldn't, then it would have to have more than one parameter. Yeah, no, that's ugly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So next topic are perfect numbers. Now check this out. Let's take a look at remainder. So let's take a look at remainder 16.3. Now what do you suppose remainder 16.3 gives you? Yeah, and why would it give you one? So you're right. Because 16 divided by three is five with a remainder of one. And so if we do remainder 17.3, what will we get? Two. Oops, I need to spell it right. Remainder 17.3, and that's 2, and remainder 18.3 is obviously what? Is 0. Okay? So now, how would we write divides? So here's what we want to do. We want to say, if we say, if we say divides, Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to put a question mark here. Divides. And what we want to have happen is this. Divides. We want, to, we want this to happen. 3, 15. And the question that we're asking here is, does 3 divide 15? And so it should return yes. But in scheme, it would return what? Pound, Pound T. Yeah? Is everybody clear? So this is what we want. To, I can't do it. I can't write... I don't want to press return here because divides is undefined. <coughs> well, okay, I'll press it. Divides is undefined. <laughs> All right, so let's write divides. Given that remainder is built in, let's write divides. So, so how can we do this? Can you guys help me out here? What do I put here? Define divides yeah we want it to return true or false yeah divides and what do we always put here lambda, lambda. and how many parameters is divides going to have okay. two so we'll call it um, we'll call them uh, a and b are you with me and what we'll we'll put a little comment here this returns pound t if a divides b evenly. Returns pound t if a 
divides b evenly. By evenly, we mean no remainder. Is everybody clear on that? Okay, and now this is a one-liner. Because 3 divides 15, why does 3 divides 15? No, there's no if. It's a one-liner. Yeah, see? Ha uh ha, -huh. no if. It's just a one-liner. When does A divide B evenly? If what? Remainder. If remainder, but remainder what? A, B or B, A? Yeah, if it does what, did you say? So therefore, what should I put here? Therefore, what should we start with? Is that, ah, this is the functional paradigm, right? So we're returning, so what do we return? Equals what? Remainder, remainder Re, Yeah. Remainder B A, so zero, boom, boom, boom. Is everybody clear on this? So hopefully divides 315 is true. Let's try it. Divides 315. Oh, divides question. That's part of the name. Divides 315. And what is it? True. On the other hand, divides 316 is what? Not true. Therefore, false. Yep, is everybody good? Now, you guys, then, let's go and take a look at what is a perfect number. Have you guys ever done, have you guys ever, this is, these are nice little puzzles that a lot of people have seen before. Do you know what a perfect number is? The sum, a perfect number is the sum of its divisors is twice the number or the number is equal to the sum of its divisors other than itself. Are you with me? So here, so here's, let me ask you a question. Is 15 perfect? Is 15, well, does one go into 15 evenly? Does one divide 15? Yes, so that's one. Does two divide 15? No, does three divide 15? Yes. So, does 4 divide 15? Does 5? Yes. Does 6? Does 7? Does 8? 9? 10? 11? 12? 13? 14? Does 15 divide 15? Yes. So what's 15 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1? Oh shoot, 20 is not 15. So that's not perfect. Oh, I should have asked you if you knew what a perfect number was. Six is an example of a perfect number. Check it out, sports fans. What are, what, what are the numbers that divide six? One, two, three, and six. If you add them all up, what's one plus two is three, plus three is six, plus six is 12. Two times six is 12, all right? Or another way of looking at it, it's one plus two plus three is six. So six is perfect. Oh, I always knew there was one reason I liked the number six. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah? So now, you guys, what do you think we're going to, why are we bringing this up? What do you think we're going to want to do? Oh, an another little factoid. There are no known odd perfect numbers. If you can find one, tell me first. We'll both publish it in a math journal. <laughs> <laughs> be famous. Okay. So now, why do we bring this up? Because it's a, 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 a yeah. Get an A in class. Yeah, that's a good. I'll give you an A in the class if you find a, if you find an odd perfect number. I will give you an A in the course. That's gonna go on for all time. Because <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be that would be huge. Okay. So what do we actually? So let's think about it. What do we need to do in order to figure out if a number is perfect. So, so now we're going to, you know, the function that we're going to write is perfect, right? And perfect, so here what we'll say is perfect 15 should return what? Perfect, 
whereas perfect six should do what? Return true. Right? So how are we going to figure out if a number is perfect? What are we going to have to do? Math. Well, yeah. And what kind of particular math are we going to have to do? No, 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 no. I mean to write the program. To write, to write perfect. What are we going to have to do? Yeah, but what are, you gonna, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to go for the given number. What are we going to have to do? Yeah, we're going to have to find all of the divisors that divide that and do what? Add them up and then see if, you know, two times that, all those ones that divide it, if that's that number. And if they are equal, then it's perfect, right? What if, um... Is everybody with me what we have to do? Like four, we're gonna. Is it one, two, two, four? Or one, two, four. Oh no! You count each one. It, well, yeah. Two, um, well, here we counted both two and. Six. Wait. What's your question? Like if you had four, two divides it, but it's. Two. No, no, no. It's the the number, the end number. If it all the ones that divide the end number evenly, you add them all up. Yeah. There's no ambiguity there. I think. Are you with me here? So what do we need? We need a function that we're going to call sum of divisors. Are you with me? Sum of divisors. Yeah? And what will sum of divisors do? Sum of divisors is going to take one parameter. And what it's going to do is it's going to return the sum of the divisors of that number. So what numbers divide Four. What numbers go into four evenly? What are they? One, two, and four. So sum of divisors four should return, what is that? Seven, right? And sum of divisors five should return what? Six. And sum of divisors six should return what? One plus two plus three plus six. And then, what will we do with the uh, sum of divisors? To see if it's perfect. Compare it to two times. To two times the number, and if they are what? Equal, Equal then? It's perfect. it's perfect. That's true, okay? So what we want to do is we want to write perfect, such that perfect four returns pound false, perfect five returns pound false, perfect six returns pound false. But what we'll do is we will use the sum of divisors. Is everybody with me? So, let's do this. Actually, let's do this. Let's, um, let's write perfect, assuming that we already have sum of divisors. All right? So, let's, so we're back to our demo here. And we, we're going to keep our divides. And so now, so now, let's write perfect, assuming that we have that, the sum of, divis sum of divisors, right? So how, do, so how do we write this? Define... Perfect. And what always goes here? Don't everybody speak up at once. Yeah. Lambda. Okay. And how many how many parameters does perfect have? Yeah. One. So this is going to be another easy one-liner. So now, assuming that we have sum of divisors, what do we what 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 will we return? Equals. Equals. Oh, yes, we could do these in either order. Yeah. Right, let's do sum of divisors first. Sum Sorry. Of divisors. Sum of divisors. Okay. And now, how many parameters does sum of divisors have? I think it just has one, right? And now what? So we have to see if that's equal to what? Yeah, times, right. Two, and either way. Okay, so that's, uh, that is our defined perfect. Let's make sure it doesn't have any syntax errors, and it works. Okay, now comes the tricky part. Okay, now look, you guys. 
here comes, this is kind of tricky. Now, now is all we need to do is write sum of divisors, right? Mm -hmm. And then everything, will, and we'll have, if it's perfect. Now here is the shape of sum of divisors, right? This is what it's going to be shaped like. It's going to start with define sum of divisors, and it's going to have one parameter, n, lambda n. Are you with me? And furthermore, here's what we're going to do. The very last expression in this function is going to be, it's going to call another function, a helper function, that we're going to name sum from plus. Are you with me? And sum from plus is going to have two parameters, and the actual parameters are going to be 1 and 0, which I'll explain in a minute. And furthermore, where is sum from plus going to be defined? Does it look like, what do you, where do you think, what do you, what's going to happen? Where will sum from plus be defined? If sum of divisors is going to call sum from plus. Normally, in all the examples we've done before, when we had a new function, where were, where were these functions? They were all where? They were all like independent. But what we're going to do this time is the following. Sum from plus is going to be defined inside sum of divisors. Now this is a different arrangement than anything we've done before. Does everybody see what we're doing? Now because sum from plus is going to be defined inside sum of divisors, it's going to have access to n. Are you with me? Does everybody see the nesting that's going on here? So all of this blank space is that we're going to define sum from plus. And then after we define sum from plus, and it's going to be recursive, it's going to call itself, then the very last thing that we're going to do in sum of divisors is we're going to call it. We're going to call sum from plus with parameters 1 and 0. So it's like our helper, normally our helper function is outside the function that calls it. This time our helper function is inside. And the reason we put it inside is so it can have access to n. Now what is sum from plus going to do? The first parameter is called low, and the second parameter is called at end. Are you with me here? So this, the code for sum from plus is going to be here, right? And what's going to happen is this low, we're going to call it sum from plus one, low, add in zero. And what exactly is sum from plus going to do? Here is the specification for sum from plus. Now see if you can, I'm going to make these slides all available to you, and this code is all in the book. But look, here is the specification of sum from plus. Sum from plus returns, now get this, returns the sum of all the divisors of n. Now where is n? That's this n. Yeah. So it's going to return the sum of all the divisors of n that are what? Greater than or equal to what? Low plus the add end. So tell me, if this is the specification of sum from plus, then what is sum from plus 1, 0 going to return? It's going to return all the what? It's going to return the what? The sum of all the divisors of what? Of n that are greater than or equal to what? 1 plus what? 0. But isn't that exactly what the sum of the divisors of n is? Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Does everybody see what that, does everybody with me on this? If sum from plus returns the sum of all the divisors of n that are greater than or equal to low plus the add-in, and if we call it with 1 for low and 0 for add-in, then it's going to return the sum of all the divisors of n that are greater than or equal to 1 plus 0. So it's going to be the sum of all the... Are you with me? Does everybody see how that works? How this specification, if we call it with a low of 1 and add in a 0, will return exactly what we need it to return. So check this out. 
Now, here, so here's the picture. And we'll do a specific example. Sum from plus returns the sum of all the divisors of n that are greater than or equal to low plus the add, add n. That's the specification for Now watch this. Here's the question. Is 12 perfect? Now, I don't want you to answer that yes or no right now, but the question is, how, would we, how will, will we calculate if 12 is perfect? What's the first thing we have to do? We have to imagine that we have all the numbers, all the integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? And what we have to do is we have to calculate the sum of all the divisors of 12. So we have to check each one of these, right? So now, what's the value of n? In this particular example, is 12. What's the value of n? The value of n is 12. Are you with me? Now here's the situation. The question is, what about this low thing? Sum from plus returns the sum of all the divisors of n that are greater than or equal to low, plus the add n. What's going to happen is, let's take the particular case where low equals 6. Now tell me, if low equals 6, then what is it that we're calculating? Sum from plus returns the sum of all the divisors divisors of 12 that are greater than or equal to what? Six. So it's going to, the sum of all the divisors of 12 that are greater than or equal to six, but then it's going to do what? Plus the add-in. So what is the add-in going to be? The add-in is going to be all of, it's going to be all of this. The part and, and what is the, in this particular case, what is the add-in going to be? It's going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Why isn't it going to be plus 5? Because 1 divides 12, 2 divides 12, 3 divides 12, 4 divides 12, but 5 doesn't divide 12. So the add-in is going to contain the sum of all the divisors less than or equal to low that divide 6. The, sorry, that divide 12. And in this particular case, you know, in the recursive call, What's going to happen is sum from plus is going to call itself over and over and over again with a bigger and bigger value of low until low gets all the way up to 12. And, and what it will do, and so it, it, one of the recursive calls will be sum from plus 6, 10. Now tell me, what will sum from plus 6, 10 call? How, how will it call itself recursively? How will we go up one step in the recursion? Yes, that's exactly right. What we have to do, how do we move, how do we move up one slot? Because, you know, how do you compute sum from plus 7 or 6, 10, assuming that you have sum from the ones before? So, so, yeah, you're right. What we, the first thing we have to do is what? Check to see if this divides 12. If it does, do what? Then we call itself recursively with what? With the add-in being, with the add-in being this one plus that. Are you with me? And if it's not, then what do we do? We don't add it to the add end. Are you with me? So this is the picture. Sum from plus return. So now, so now let's. So now, how do we write the code? Oh shoot! It's time to quit, and we're just right on that verge. <laughs> Shall we wait till next time? I suppose we'll need to wait till next time. We'll start here. Oh, that's just tomorrow anyway. Anyway, all right. Good deal. See you tomorrow.